observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. Why, why was I motivated? You know, I was streaming all day with John Campia. We did a, a, a mailbag, and then why did I do this? Well, I recorded a Inglorious Trexperts podcast tonight, a follow-up to our 101 greatest science fiction films of all time. And we were talking about movies that we left out. And we were also talking about, we got into a bit of a, a bit of a spicy conversation about whether or not is Star Wars science fiction. And we started getting into an argument about the genre and genre trappings and what exactly is science fiction anyway. Um, and I was like, you know what? I talk about this all the time. I'm going to jump on. I'm just going to just do a short little Rob observations and talk about science fiction. That's what I'm going to do. Like what I think about it. What does it mean? What is my favorite definition of science fiction? And is, in fact, Star Wars science fiction? Let me tell you, no, it's not. But I'm going to get to that. First, I would like to say I want to talk about my favorite definition of science fiction, which was brought to you by science fiction writer Brian Aldiss. Brian Aldiss, who died in 2017. Uh, you might know Brian Aldiss because his short story, Super Toys Last All Summer Long, was developed by Stanley Kubrick into the movie that Steven Spielberg eventually made called AI, Artificial Intelligence. And that story was written in 1969, and Kubrick tapped him to help him develop. He was one of a few writers that came in to develop uh, Kubrick's Pinocchio story with a sci-fi bent. Brian Aldiss said that he did not believe that science fiction had anything to do with predicting the future, Yet at the end of his story, a conversation between two AI toys seems to hint at AI taking control over real intelligence, a concern that Elon Musk and others said uh, bothers Elon Musk and others. Teddy said, you ask such silly questions, David. Nobody knows what real really means. For Aldous, sci-fi was a metaphor for the human condition. It started as a post-industrial revolution genre, with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein being the vanguard. The gothic novel inspired the celebrated British sci-fi writer to come up with a definition of science fiction that stayed with him till a day after his 92nd birthday when he died in his Oxford home on August 19th, 2017. Well, what is it? What is science fiction? The definition was unveiled in Brian Aldiss's 1973 work, Billion Year Spree, The True History of Science Fiction in which he passionately, and some would say stubbornly, defended his thesis of naming Frankenstein the first science fiction novel. And all this said, science fiction is the search for a definition of mankind and his status in the universe, which will stand in our advanced but confused state of knowledge and science, and is characteristically cast in the Gothic or post-Gothic mode. Mold, not mold, mold. And it is not that he retrofitted the sentence to include his personal view of science fiction, although his works in the genre were created with the same belief both before and after he articulated his definition. Now, this was a, a literary tribute written by Deb Kumar Mitra on August 26, 2017. That's where I was getting that from. Now, I want to read a little bit, and this is going to go on for a while, but I want to read this. Paul Kincaid wrote this uh, on the origins of genre. And this is what he writes. This is what Paul Kincaid writes. There is no starting point for science fiction. There is no one novel, which is different than what Brian Aldiss said. There is no one novel that marks the beginning of the genre. We have all had a go at identifying the Urtex, the source from which Heinlein and Ellison and Gibson and Ballard and Priest and Le Guin and a host of others flow. Brian Aldiss, famously named Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and his suggestion has been taken up by a number of later commentators. Other strong contenders include H.G. Wells or Edgar Allan Poe or Jules Verne. Gary Westfall has nominated Hugo Gernsback as the true father of science fiction. Still others, including myself, has gone, have gone back to Thomas More's Utopia. We are all wrong. We have to be wrong because there is no ancestral text that could possibly contain even in nascent form, all that we have come to identify as science fiction. 
What part of Frankenstein, for instance, is diluted as homeopathic medicine is to be found in Philip K. Dick's The Martian Time Slip, or Gene Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun, or Octavia Butler's Parable of the Talents, or Isaac Asimov's Foundation? What, come to that, could possibly link these desperate, disparate texts other than the fact that we have come to apply the name science fiction to all of them? This inability to define science fiction is a problem we have long recognized. In his 1986 work, Critical Terms for Science Fiction, a glossary and guide to scholarship, Gary K. Wolf included 33 different definitions of science fiction, many of which overlap to some degree or other, but all of which included contradictions. The critical test for any definition is that it includes everything we believe should be included within the term, and it excludes everything we believe should be omitted. Strictly applied, every single one of those definitions would admit to the genre works that we would prefer to exclude, or would omit works we feel belong in the genre. Even Darko Suvin's cognitive, ex ex cognitive estrangement expressed thus. Sci-fi in general, through its long history in different contexts, can be defined as a literary genre whose necessary and sufficient conditions are the presence and interaction of estrangement and cognition which seems to have become the default definition of choice of most academic critics. It's a prescriptive def definition that works fine as long as we're comfortable with what it prescribes, but can lead to extraordinary convolutions as we try and show that certain favored texts really do conform to the idea of, co of cognitive estrangement and even more extraordinary convolutions to reveal that familiar non-sci-fi texts don't. Since Wolf's Tour to Horizon... Science fiction scholarship has expanded exponentially, and most commentators have felt the need to add a new way of defining what it is they're talking about. These vary, these vary from formulations that are so imprecise as to be virtually useless. Kim Stanley Robinson, in his Guest of Honor speech at ReaderCon in 1997, said, Science fiction is the history that we cannot know to those that attempt to touch every base and end up <laughs> trying themselves in knots in the process. In the sixth edition of the Oxford Companion to English Literature in 2000, says, The label science fiction suggests a hybrid form, not quite ordinary fiction, not quite science, yet partaking of both. Beneath this label, we find a variety of wares, some of which trail off from a hypothetical central point into utopianism or dystopianism, heroic fantasy, horror, and books on UFOs and the paranormal. Yet its statements are normally based either on possible scientific advance or on natural or social change or on a suspicion that the world is not as commonly represented. It follows that one of the unacknowledged pleasures of reading science fiction or sci-fi is that it challenges readers to decide whether what they are reading is within the bounds of the possible. I mean, I know this is a bit heady, uh, but I think what's really interesting is when we were talking about uh, what makes a science fiction movie, uh, and we decided that Star Wars was not science fiction we all got a little spicy a little heated and uh it was two on two and it's um kind of um it was kind of interesting i mean it was what we believed and what we didn't believe and i i really like uh arthur c clark of course the man who defined science fiction through his work with Stanley Kubrick in 2001. Um, I really like his definition of science fiction, and I just had it in front of me, but um, now I seem to have lost it. But Philip K. Dick, who wrote Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, he said this. He said, I will define science fiction first by saying what science fiction is not. It cannot be defined as a story or a novel or a play set in the future. <clears throat> since there exists such a thing as space adventure, which is set in the future but is not sci-fi. It is just that. Adventures, fights, and wars in the future in space involving super-advanced technology. Why, then, is it not science fiction? It would seem to be, 
and Doris Lessing supposes that it is. However, space adventure lacks the distinct new idea that is the essential ingredient of science fiction. Also, there can be science fiction set in the present, the alternate world story or novel. So if we separate sci-fi from the future and also from ultra-advanced technology, what then do we have that can be called science fiction? We have a fictitious world. That's the first step. It is a society that does not in fact exist, but is predicated on our known society. That is, our known society acts as a jumping off point for it. The society advances out of our own in some way, perhaps orthogonally, as with the alternate world story or novel. It is our world dislocated by some kind of mental effort on the part of the author. Our world transformed into which it is not yet. I thought that was great. Uh, Kim Stanley Robinson again says, In every sci-fi narrative, there is an explicit or implicit fictional history that connects the period depicted in our present moment to some moment in our past. Isaac Asimov, who wrote Foundation, said, Hard science fiction are stories that feature authentic scientific knowledge and depend upon it for plot development and plot resolution. And perhaps one of my favorites, which is Arthur C. Clarke, who said, Science fiction is something that could happen, but you usually wouldn't want it to. Fantasy is something that couldn't happen, though you only often wish that it could. I was like that. I thought that was a good definition of science fiction. Um, <clears throat> an interesting, now back to this article that I was reading by Mr. Paul Kincaid, um, the origins of the genre. Um, in brief, the more comprehensively a definition seeks to encompass science fiction, the more unsatisfactory it seems to those of us who know the genre, to which one response is that we simply ignore the question altogether. The Shoot and Nichols Encyclopedia of Science Fiction from 1993 contains reference to just about every form of science fiction, but though there is an entry on definitions of science fiction, it doesn't actually include a definition of science fiction. The article, which covers much of the same ground as the entry in Gary Wolf's book, is a conspectus of the different and often incompatible definitions that have been proposed for the genre. But it does not arrive at a single comprehensive overview of what science fiction is. Either there is no such single comprehensive definition, or as when the Oxford Companion to English Literature concludes that science fiction challenges the readers to decide, we finally admit that science fiction is not defined by something intrinsic to the genre, but rather it is in the eye of the beholder. In other words, many of us end up echoing Damon Knight. Science fiction is what we point to when we say it. Though it is worth remembering what Damon Knight actually wrote in In Search of Wonder in 1956 was, the term science fiction is a misnomer. It will do us no particular harm if we remember that, like the Saturday Evening Post, it means what we point to when we say it. Uh, is that true? I don't know. Um, one brutalist variant is my friend Norman Spinrad. He's not really my friend. I've only spoken to him, I think, once. But uh, he wrote The Doomsday Machine, and he also wrote a great book called Bug Jack Barron that I like. Science fiction is anything published as science fiction, which excludes Frankenstein and most of the works of H.G. Wells and practically every contemporary science fiction novel, at least in Britain, where publishers have mostly abandoned putting the descriptor science fiction on their books. <laughs> so I bring you back to this. Brian Aldiss's famous definition. Science fiction, and my favorite, is the search for a definition of man and his state in the universe, which will stand in our advanced but confused state of knowledge. That's my favorite definition of science fiction.